So good morning, everybody. Um, I, I'm going to try this from here today, wearing this robe. It just somehow this robe made things seem more serious and more formal. Um, but then as I was sitting over there, I realized there's nothing serious or formal about me. And so um, I'm not used to doing anything at all but just talking to you. And so I'm going to try that again today, but I'm going to try it from up here and try to be still while I do it. So if you'll pray for me to be able to be still, I would appreciate that very much. All right, so Jim read for us um, from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 6 through 14. And the setting here is of the apostles, although we weren't calling them the apostles yet, but the followers of Jesus Christ, the, the folks who actually had seen Jesus, had, had put their eyes on Jesus, they just spent 40 days with him after the resurrection. Now, this is not the Jesus of, of Nazareth that they were walking around with, but this is the risen Christ. They were walking around with someone who had been dead and was now alive. They watched him suffer and die. They have seen his hands and his feet and the wounds in his side and the scars of his crucifixion. This group of people, these women, and I mention them first, even though the Bible doesn't, but that's another sermon. These fishermen, these tax collectors and carpenters, these are the first witnesses to who Jesus Christ was. And it's their story, it's their story that is the reason that we have a story to tell today. Without them, without these scriptures, and without the commitment of these first witnesses, we wouldn't have a story to tell, or maybe at least not this story. So let's look for a minute and see what they did as they're walking with Jesus after the crucifixion. Well, of course, the first thing they did, which is what most children do, um, is they ask, Lord, is it time? Is it time? Is now the time when the kingdom of God is going to be going to start on the earth? Is now is the time when heaven is going to take over and, and we're going to be freed from this oppression that we've been suffering under? Because you have to remember, everything that had been going on in their lives before Christ appeared was under, they suffered under the oppression of the Roman government. And so there were laws and, and there was... Um, there was this, this suffering that they went through. They were punished for being Jewish under the Roman regime. And so they, they'd been living with this for decades. And then when Jesus came and they started following Jesus, then you have to add on the oppression that they suffered at the hands of their own Jewish brothers and sisters. When they, when they began to say that they believed in Jesus Christ, they also suffered there. Because for the Jews, Jesus wasn't the Son of God. For some of the Jews, Jesus wasn't the Son of God. And so they'd been suffering for a long time. And so, of course, they asked, Lord, is it time? Are you going to change things for us now? And so what does Jesus say to them? Usually, um, this is what Jesus always says to us when we ask. Lord, is it time? Is this suffering over now? Are we through? Am I, am I at the end of this dilemma or this crisis, whatever it is I'm going through? And so Jesus said to them what he usually always says to us. He said, you know what? It's not for you to know. You're going to have to keep having faith in me. You're going to have to keep believing because I can't share all of the details with you. But what I can tell you is that you are going to receive a gift. And Jesus says to them in verse 7, It's not for you to know times or epochs which the Father is fixed by his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea. You will receive power. The word for receive in this case is the word lambano, 
And this word means to receive, but not just to receive as a gift, but to receive with the intention of doing something with that gift. And so what we have is we have received a gift. We have received the power of the Holy Spirit intended for God's purposes. And this is the moment in history when God sent the Holy Spirit into the lives of human beings. We've received the power from the Holy Spirit right here in the book of Acts. And they received this power because the answer to their question, Lord, is it time? Are you gonna end our suffering now? Is this oppression gonna be over? When Christ had to tell them, I can't tell you if it's time or not. When the answer to that question was no, God didn't leave them hanging there and say to them, well, good luck to you. I hope you do okay, but no, I'm not going to save you right now. What God did instead is he sent the power of the Holy Spirit and he gave them a command. Jesus said to them, you will be my witnesses. You will carry out this task. You will tell all the world about me. This is your job from now on. And you will receive a supernatural power to be able to do this. Now, that, that excites me a little bit. When I um, first heard this voice in my head, this call to, to preach, uh, and sometimes I think it was just that, it was just a voice in my head. <laughs> um, I, I'm not sure sometimes that it was the voice of God. At other times, I, I feel like it was, and so I still struggle with that a little bit. But... But one of the things that makes me, um, that, that gives me courage and gives me strength and comforts me is that I know that I have, a, a, I have this same supernatural power that God gave to these people in Acts. And so it's the power of the Holy Spirit. Now we believe in the Trinity, and we've talked about this before when I've, when I've talked to you, about how, um, how complicated believing in the Trinity can be. We believe in a single God composed of three persons. God invisible, who was present as a, in a cloud or as in fire in the Old Testament. We know that God. No one ever saw that God. No one put their eyes on that God. And then we have God incarnate. We have Jesus Christ as God, fully human and fully divine. And now what we have, what we see here, what we're witness to right here is God indwelling, a God that lives inside of us. Now, it takes a supernatural power to understand the Trinity. And it takes a supernatural power to have faith in the Trinity, even when you don't completely understand the Trinity. Because as I was writing this sermon, I changed those last four sentences about 15 times. Because I would write something and I would say, well, no, that's not exactly what the Trinity is. And so then I would write something else and I would read a little bit and I would look at some class notes from last semester and, and, and I would write something and I, oh, no, that's not exactly what the Trinity is. So part of being a Christian is just trusting that when God says there are three persons, there are three persons. And what we have with us now is the Holy Spirit. The thing to remember about this is, it's all God. It's all God. And the Holy Spirit lives within our hearts. We are filled with the power of God Almighty. And we are instructed to take that power and to be witnesses of Jesus. Now this power of God, it lives in us. And it lives in us so that we might tell others about the living God we worship. And it lives in us so that we can share the love of Jesus Christ with the unlovable. And this power of God lives with us and in us so that we can be the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ to our communities. And this power of God enables us to tell the world that there is room at the cross for everyone. There's room at the cross for Islam and for Judaism and for Hindus and Buddhists. There's room at the cross for unbelievers and for other believers. There is room at the cross for your neighbor across town and your neighbor across the aisle. 
There's room for refugees, and there's room for those who are fleeing persecution. There is room at the cross for the immigrant family who's seeking a better life. There's room for the poor, and for the hungry, and for the outcast. Room for the gay community, room for the transgender community, room for single people and widowed people and married people. There is room at the cross for the right wing. And there's room at the cross for the left wing. And there's room at the cross for everyone who's in between. There is room at the cross for the inmate and for the parolee. There is room at the cross for the addict and for the alcoholic. There is room at the cross for those with mental illness, for those with wounded souls and wounded spirits. There is room at the cross for those who have been abused, and there is room at the cross for the abuser, room for the victim, and room for the criminal. There is room at the cross for the oppressed, and room at the cross for the oppressor. There is room at the cross for everyone. And as we remember these days of Pentecost, we have to keep in mind now that we are the witnesses to this message. You are infused with the Holy Spirit. Now, one of the things that I'd love to do, I, there's this new trend of drinking infused water. You guys know what infused water is? You take plain water and you add things to it to... They say it adds vitamins and changes the flavor, but it makes plain old drinking water kind of exciting. And so one of my favorite things is cold water, ice water, with cucumbers and a little bit of basil and some lime. And you just mix it up there, and man, it is just so refreshing, and it's just so enjoyable. But the thing about infused water is infused water, the molecule, the water molecule never changes. It's still two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. H2O is H2O, no matter what you add to it. Because if you changed that molecule, it wouldn't be water anymore. But that's not how it is with us. God didn't add the Holy Spirit to our lives in order to make us more palatable. Although that's a helpful side effect. <laughs> God added the Holy Spirit to our lives, and in that addition, in that infusion of the power of God into our lives, he changed us at a molecular level. He changed us at the very, at the very foundation of who we are. At the very core of our being, we are different now because of this infusion of the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to look, review with me right quick, because I know none of you carry a Bible. It's just amazing to me. I can't, there are many things I try to get over growing up as a Baptist, many things I've left behind as a Baptist, but I guess uh, that's never going to be one thing I leave behind, and so I'm going to always terrorize you about it, <laughs> because it, there's a Bible at the, end of your, at the end of your pew where you're sitting. So I want you to look at something, because I want you to read this, and when you go home this week, I want you to read this every day for me this week. But in Acts 1, 13 through 14, remember now, you're the witnesses to the message of Christ. And I want you to look at the company you're keeping. Acts chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room and they were where they were staying. That is Peter and John and James and Andrew and Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James and Simon and Judas and the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus. That's the company you're keeping. Those were the witnesses, and now you are the witnesses. You are carrying the message that they were given as they walked with Jesus Christ. Now, if you flip over to Hebrews, you can see those aren't the only witnesses. Hebrews 11, some people call that the, uh, the all-stars the all-star list, right, of the Bible. It talks about all of the, the saints of old, um, is what we call them at school, the saints of old. And so when you talk about Cain and Abel and Enoch and Noah and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Sarah, those are the witnesses 
of the power and the love of God that we know about from the Old Testament. And they carried their witness by faith. Because remember, they couldn't see God. And so as these people, as these people are listed in Hebrews 11 and in Acts, I want you to remember that because you have been changed at your core, because you are infused with the love of God and are the witnesses to who Christ is, this is the company you're keeping. And we have our own all-star team. We have our very own all-star team. We have Miss Audrey. We have Billy Hudson and George Hemrick and Jerry Brower and Bob Swatzel and many others that we have lost who worshiped in this church with us for years. They are also a part of this witness. And in Hebrews 12, it says to them, Therefore, since you have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding you, let, let us lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you may not grow weary and lose heart. Because you know what? Being a witness, it's, sometimes it's hard. Being a witness is hard. And so you may lose heart. You may grow weary. And so when you start to feel that way, I want you to read Hebrews 11, and I want you to read Hebrews 12, and I want you to remember that you're infused, that the Holy Spirit lives in you. You're not infused like water, but you're changed at the very core of your being. You're not alone in this anymore. God lives in your heart, and God walks in your shoes. God has changed you in such a way that the power of God is available to you. And it's your job. Christ has, has given us this commandment to be his witnesses. So here's my question to you, St. Matthew's United Methodist Church and visitors and family and friends. Here's my question to you. Knowing that you're a witness and knowing that you are now infused with the power of God, are you doing what these guys did and are you standing looking up into the sky wondering where Jesus went? Uh, can't you just see them standing there with their mouths hanging open? Where did he go? Is that you? Or are you standing, looking into the mirror, recognizing that the power of Almighty God lives in you and gives you the strength to be God's witnesses for the world? Are you standing in the world being God's witness to God's creation? When was the last time you showed someone with your actions and deeds that there's room at the cross for them? Pray with me. Creator God, let us remember the power of the Holy Spirit as we leave this place. Let us focus on being changed human beings and witnesses of your love and mercy. Let us run this race with your legs, rescue this world with your hands, and recover our connection to you through the Holy Spirit. Finally, Lord, let us remember that all are welcome at the foot of the cross. Amen.